set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that had life and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the oh, air. Yeah. And over the castle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creates upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Amen. Praise the Lord. Happy Thank you very much, Dad. And that's chapter one of Genesis. And today we are talking about a topic which I titled Dress It and Keep It. Dress It and Keep It. I know we are all English students and we are familiar with Genesis chapter two, right? You're not familiar again. That you know. All right, Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, now I read. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and what? To keep it. So now, you're English student. What does it mean if I ask you, um, brother, this place, dress it and keep it? What comes to your mind when you hear the word dress it and the word keep it? At least in context of that scripture, it was in a garden. Take care of it, to maintain it, prune it. Basically, so that there can be productivity, that's what it means. Make sure, just like a, um, a husband man is somebody who keep, uh, take care of the garden, right? So, you take care of the garden to make sure that all the flowers, the crops, the fruits are growing and they are producing their fruit. And the keeping it means that there is also protection. So, that means there might be animals that want to devour the crops or whatever. So, there's a part where you need to dress it to nurture it. And there's a part where you also need to protect it. Amen. So that means Adam had two major work in the Garden of Eden. That was the work of what? Dressing it and the work of keeping it. Now I want you to pay attention and see like, a, like you are the one in the garden now. Adam, Adam, Adam has been in the garden. Now you are the one now. That God is giving you a commandment of dressing it and a commandment of keeping it. Now, I know many people will be like, okay, what does that mean? What are we dressing? What are we keeping? Is still concerning what the purpose, basically, purpose that God has given you. Amen. Don't increase my volume. It's okay. Just leave it that way. Because you will be made to be a, um, moving up and down. All right. Hallelujah. Okay. So, as you're saying, he said that he should dress it and to keep it. Now, paying attention to the creative story or creation story, you discover that when God came first, the goal was not to make a man at first, right? He didn't start with making a man. Of course, he, might, he had that in mind, but the goal was not to start making a man because imagine if he made man first before that thing. The man doesn't have anything doing, right? The man doesn't even have where to stay. So
So God provided an accommodation first where he needs to stay. And I want you to understand something as we move on. To let you understand that God was meticulous about the details of what was happening in the garden. Is it okay now? Amen. All right. Because it can't be more than that. This is very loud. Very, very loud. Okay. Or you can end up with that button just ahead of the cord. No, no, no. Your audio cord. There's a button there that should come up. Yeah, let it come up. Okay. So I think you should better. Okay. So Genesis 2 5. You see now, in this chapter 1, God said, Let there be light. He said, Let the water separate, right? All those things. He began to put things in order because he wanted to create a. Um, a, 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 what do we call that in is it habitation right or yeah in biology you know we have little sphere what do they call that in? a habitat thank you a habitat for the man because the man needed a place to survive a man if, imagine you created a man would the man be floating because there was only water right the bible says there was everywhere was covered with water and god that means water was existing before creation amen right so god did not create water in that creation. But of course, we know he created all things. Don't get me wrong. But water was already existing. So what he just did is that he had to put land so that we could work on the land because he knows that human being was not designed to live. I can hear myself. Am I the only one? Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> so, because man that is designing cannot stay in the water. If God wanted to create only fish, he doesn't need to create land. Yes or no? Because that was the perfect habitation. But because he wanted to create that man, he needed to create, a, to create an habitation that would be conducive for man. He made fruits, he made animals, he made everything. And do you know that when he was creating, they didn't tell you that God was creating Garden of Eden. Right? I'm going somewhere. What was he creating? Heaven and the earth? Good. And when he was creating, he made all things available, the crops, everything. And the animals. Now, he now said... At this point, let us make man in our own image, in our likeness. So, and he said, let him be fruitful, let him multiply, let him subdue, control, be in charge. This word dominion, this word kabash. The word means to subdue, to be in charge. So now, if he's controlling it, means that God has given him authority over all the animals. And that's why you can eat good and it's not the same, right? You understand? Because you have dominion. So if I cast out demon now, there is not, this is not the habitation. Because why? I have dominion and it's not a problem. Because it's part of the dominion mandate. Some people say, hey, you know, there's, there's something they used to tell us when we're small. That on Fridays, you should not eat animals with blood. I don't know if I'm really one that I've heard that before. Have you heard that before? Ah, how did you guys grow up? <laughs> no, you've not heard of it before. Or maybe Easter Friday at least. Don't eat something that has blood. Hey. So now let me they dupe. They're not dupe now. Because I remember that time. There was one day I went to go and buy fish, fried fish. It was a Friday. And I now remember that, ah, they said you should not eat an animal with blood. And I remember that, ah, fish has blood. I, I couldn't eat the fish again. I left it. But now I've grown. And, I, and, and I'm, I, know, I know better now. Because then, that's what it happens. When they told us that, ah, should, okay, Friday. Because, you know, eh, on Friday it is dangerous to be eating animals with blood. And of course, everybody wants to protect themselves. I'm sure if they told you that too, probably you'd have been conscious of that. But until I now grew up, after at some point, you know there's a point you get to frustration where maybe you want to buy something one day and it was a, they give you rice with shrimps, fish, chicken, and it's a Friday. Ah, I should not eat animal with blood, okay? If like I say that today, I go break the vow, of my, the vow of consecration. So when that happened the first time, nothing happened to me. I felt like I can do more. And I continued that way. Later, I now understood that there was nothing like that or nothing like that is existing so when god made all things they scammed me exactly god made all things available so that the man will not starve so god made eden so that the man can have something to eat there's something to keep because if man came he will not have anything to survive on in his habitation before that and of course he will not even have anything to keep and dress and what will he be dressing then when he gave man that work because, and many people have asked questions on, okay, God blessed only the man before he created the woman. No. Initially, in chapter 1, it was more of spiritual cre creation. The spiritual part of this creation. That's where he said, let him be fruitful. Let him multiply. It's a blessing upon man. And the word man, and he said, 
bless them, yeah. Because the one man there is for both at that time. But when he now wanted to create a woman, that's where separation came. And I said, and he made a woman for him. That man he was making woman for is the man male now. Because that's the difference. So when he made the woman, he said, let us, it's not good for a man to be alone because there's no one that can comfort the man like man. Because man could not have found solace in animals. Some people find solace in dogs and cats and they keep them as pets. But it's still not good for a man to be alone. Because some of you, you like dog. You like dog, yeah? Anybody, do you like dog or cat? Dog. You like cat? You like cat? <laughs> this brother. Okay. You like dog and cat, but you still want to marry, yes or no? Do you still want to marry? Do you want to marry? Yes. Do you want to marry? Good. So that means your love for cat is not so great that you don't want to marry. That's what I mean, right? So that's why when God saw it, God saw this day that this brother, this sister, will not be able to find solace in cat and dog to the point that they will say, oh, I don't want to marry. That's why I said, because it's not good for a man to be alone. He said, I will make for him what? An helpmate. We are still going somewhere. We are trying to build up to where we are going. If you check chapter 2 verse 1, he said, Thus the heaven and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day for all his, from all his work, which he has done. Of course, that the word rest today is the word Sabbath, you know. Alright, verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all the work which God created and made. For these are the generations of the heaven and the earth which they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Five. And every plant of the field before it was on the, in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew for the Lord God had not caused it to rain. Now you see at that point the God did not cause it to rain because he knows that if it rains in that garden and there's no man to dress and keep it what will happen? What will happen? It's overgrown. There will be weed. Right? To turn to forest. Exactly. And the goal is to have a garden, not a forest. You understand that? So if God has caused it to rain, that means, so now I can as well say that when God created in that Genesis, I said it's a, it's a proclamation part. So that means all the seed were already on the ground. So it's not like they were all growing without control because it didn't cause it to rain. But when it caused it to rain, because the man was created. So immediately it caused it to rain. He said there was a mist in verse what? That's verse 7, right? No, verse 6. And I said, but there went, there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the earth. So that means it was not rain first. It was not like a mist or a shower. Okay? Verse 7. So that because he wanted to mold man and he needed clay. So he needed water and clay. Amen. So that's why the mist needed to come first. So that he, and in verse 7 said, and the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nursery and the, the breath of life and the man became a living soul. All right. In theology class, I explained the difference between a living soul, right? And a quickening spirit. Do you remember? What's the difference between a living soul and a quickening spirit? Exactly. The first Adam is a living soul. The second Adam is a quickening spirit. So that's why he still, at that point, Adam was still living from his soul too. That's why he could make decision and he could make that error. But the goal eventually was for him to become a quickening, quickening spirit. That's exactly what Jesus Christ came to um, reveal to us. And that's why the Bible if that same spirit that is in Christ just in you, the quickening will happen. You become, a, you become that quickening spirit. will quicken you so that you can become on the level that God really wants you to become. So now, we are in verse 8. And the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden. So now, at this point that we are from this verse 8, pay attention to all the details that is in that scripture. Verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. So that means God first of all made the earth. I know he made heavens too. We are dealing with earth. When he made the earth, he now, Eden was in the earth, right? He created Eden too. Now, he now made a garden in Eden. You know it's not the same. Because many say, why we call it Garden of Eden? It's not because the whole Eden is a garden, right? Because if you go further, they will tell you that the garden was in the eastward of Eden. We are coming. And of course, we understand that the word Eden is God's presence. So that means God made a quota out for Eden, Adam. Because the goal of God was not for Adam to, uh, to fill the earth by himself. The goal or the work of Adam was not to dress or keep the earth. The goal of Adam was to dress and to keep what? The garden. We are going somewhere. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, and I will now help you to understand that the rebellion that Cain and Nimrod had was not, the, the problem was not the fact that they went to a far country. The problem is that they were trying to create an institution or a system outside of God. Because the goal of God was to replenish the earth in the first place. So that you will know 
from today that is not every every your goal is not to service all humanity you cannot do that you you have your own jurisdiction everybody have their jurisdiction and that's why the concept of greater works but that's why jesus christ could not go all the earth when he was on earth he has a jurisdiction of what he was meant to do so the goal of adam was to dress and to keep what the garden not even a day right you know okay let's go where are we verse what eight right and the Lord planted a garden eastward in Eden. And he put the man whom he had formed, and out of the ground made the Lord God to grow all the trees. You know, these things started growing because the man is available. And good for food, and the trees of life in the midst of the garden, and tree of knowledge of you, and all that, and all that. And verse 10, he said, there went up a river, the waters, uh, let's move a little bit down, then to 15 now. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it. And to keep it. Understand that scripture now first. Braid in and braid out. Many of you have to understand that. The, the kind of ro- race you are running. Eh, you are trying to dress. And keep the earth. And that is why you are becoming frustrated in your purpose. So God can call Sister Mojola now. Into an evangelical ministry. But her goal is not to evangelize to the whole earth. Because she cannot do it. And that's why in Great Commission. Says, you all go into the world. So that means only you will not go into the world. The instruction was done for one person. That's why many people say, hey, she because we should be fruitful and be multiplied. Let me just be giving birth without control. And only you cannot replenish yet. Abi, you want to burn like, even if you burn 1,000, so if you can't replenish yet. Abi? And that's why, and this will help you to understand that when you are doing business, economics is right when we say you must know what to produce how to produce and whom to produce it for. You cannot do any, there's no business you will do that all the whole world will buy from you. There's no body you can mention. Even if you like mention Tesla, it's not all the whole world that is buying it. Because there are countries that are not using Tesla. There are products that internationally, it can be international products, but doesn't mean you will find it in every country. There are countries that build their own thing by themselves, that they don't export, that they don't import. Go to a place like North Korea, they have their stuff. China, they make almost all their stuff by themselves. So you have to know that the goal is not for you to what to dress and keep the earth. Now, if we're talking about man generally, our goal is to definitely the end the end product is we are going to what dress and keep the earth eventually. You understand? It makes sense. But you, you, you are not called, you as a person, was you are not called to dress and keep the earth. You are dressed to keep the garden. That's why when you are talking about purpose, the garden which God has put you is your purpose. So most people have frustration. For example, now you can say, ah, the way KCIM is now, you can say, ah, almost, almost, almost all the churches now, they are having branch everywhere, 50 branches. Where are Sister Mujola? You're going to open the one in UK. Sister Dami, we are sending you to Australia. Uh, Bob Wright, we are sending you to Iraq. Sister Ife, we are sending you to Saudi Arabia or Palestine. You? And we are, Brother Daniel, we will just send you somewhere. Maybe not like North Korea. So now, <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? They send you everywhere. The goal now is, did God ask us to open a branch? That's where we're going to start from. Because the goal is first, that we should keep and dress the garden. So if God has not extended your garden, you are still here. Now, 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 I'll tell you that there are times where God can actually extend, increase your garden. That's when he finds you trustworthy and faithful. In the little. The Bible says that to him that is faithful with little, more will be given. But let it be that more was given. Because if you look, take it into a business sense too. Some people do business. Maybe Stadam is selling wedding gown. And she's selling wedding gown. Generally, she's making maybe one million naira in a week. As profit. In a week. Now she now felt like, ah, hey, this one, eh? People that are buying wedding gown, they're going to that shop to buy accessories. I'll start selling accessories soon. Now she now decided that she wants to be selling accessories. And because of that, before she knows it, the accessory was not moving. And it even affected her normal business. And there was a decline. And she maybe she's now making like 500,000 now. Because that was not, she, she wants to supply everybody. You know, some people, the reason why they are selling everything is because they want to make sure that no other shop is making sale here. You know, they are selling it, I'll add it. You know, they are selling it, I'll add it. And eventually, what you should do is that there will be a decline. Because you are no goal was not to come and dress everybody. That's why you want to do business. You, God give you inspiration that try this one, do this one. One. You are selling pure water, now you do sell Coke, join. You are selling what again? You are selling uh, snacks. You get show glass of front selling snacks. Person, we need water. We need snacks. That woman that is selling snacks, they will not buy from her again. They will buy it. 
you'll be surprised that they like that woman more than you when it comes to snacks. And because of the snacks, snack can even be vexing some people that what's this woman? We're not even buying snacks and drink again for her. They will not go and buy water as well too. So you have to understand when it comes to power, in this month we're talking about doctrine of power, but you must understand that power and authority has jurisdiction. Even though you have authority of Christ, your authority has jurisdiction. You cannot come and say, uh, oh yeah, since I have authority like Jesus, now I'm part of the Godhead. You're not part of Godhead. <laughs> Amen. I now say, eh, since I have authority like Jesus, God the Father, come here, I want to see you. You must know that power has jurisdiction. And in this kingdom, power is not, and authority doesn't just work, it's just like that. You must understand that if God called Bro Bright to a ministry, and has empowered him for that ministry. The jurisdiction of that power that he has given him, be or that anointing for that ministry, is for that work specifically. And that jurisdiction. Yes, anointing can do other things. But you must know that anointing is specific when it comes to anointing. You, I can't have anointing to heal the sick, but you know what? I might not know how to manage money. And that anointing will not take care of that. That's why it can be a fornicator. You can see be dispensing anointing. What happened? Anointing is specific. So that we will not say, well, ministry is ministry. Uh, I'm going to Australia to go and um, we are not doing KCIM here again. In case you don't see me next Sunday, I'm going to Australia. I want to go and open KCIM. But if you are willing to follow me, tell me I will pay for your flight and all that. Now, in that way, what am I doing? In that way, what am I doing? I am moving outside of my jurisdiction. Maybe a day will come that I will start traveling to Australia. Thank God for that. But as long as that door is not open, the danger is that when you start exposing yourself that way, God has trained me for Abel Okuta. And if I go to Australia, maybe the witches there are even more wicked than that. And you know, the covering of God is always when you are in the will of God. When God will cover you and say, um, Bright, I'm going to keep you all the days of your life, nothing would touch your body. When you read Psalm 91, some of you don't know, say, The Lord is my shepherd. Ah, sorry, 91 is. He that dwells secret of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, in that study, listen. I will say, Is my this, is my that. Um, the sun shall not smite me by day, the moon by night. He will give his angel charge. Now, go and read verse 1 again and understand it. He said, He that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide. So he's talking about lordship. You must be under him. And when you're under him, it means you will be concerned about his will. And you will be in his will. Being in his will now means that. Or you will not be able to make all those statements. Because you are what? Under. The shadow. If you are not under the shadow, what happened? All the remaining thing you are reading is what? Waste of time. It's waste of time. And that's why many people, they will say, but why is God allowing this thing to happen? Many things can cause it. When you see an, a minister being attacked by the devil, or was attacked and God allowed it, many things you look at. It might even be that the person is already out of jurisdiction. It might be that something happened. Many things can be the factor. And one of the factors is that it might not even be the will of God. So even in this Abel Okuta, I still know my jurisdiction. Because only me will not dress and keep Abel Okuta. Amen. So when God told Adam, he said, what? This garden, dress it. And what? And keep it. But what happened? The day that Adam and Eve decided that they want a wider scope than Eden, they fell. What did he say? He said, this fruit is what? It's nice. It, no, it, uh, the devil told them that if you eat of this fruit, you'll be what? You'll become like God. And you don't. The Bible said the heavens of heaven belong to God. Now they don't give you it. But you still want heaven. And you don't know that's the meaning. If you say you'll be like God, that means you have, you'll be part of Godhead, in short. Or you have your, you can create a parallel government. Because that's what the devil also wanted. So when you are thinking of leaving your jurisdiction, fall is inevitable. A fall is what? Inevitable. Somebody can bring money and say, Pastor, ha, ah, the week you can start giving KCI maybe 10, 10 million every week. I know the church is growing. We have filled this place. Ah, Pastor, I saw a land in Lagos. I want to give you that place so that I can't branch Lagos. I have one in Abuja. And it's like, hey, God, the miracle work out. Miracle working God is doing it. And you are singing, you are dancing. Now, the fact that a door open doesn't mean that it's God. Because the devil too, if the devil knows that if he give you money now, you will move out, you will not come to church again. He will give you money. The devil knows that if he give you a billion now, you just you you forget God. He will give you. I remember I was listening to a video, and the the guy said, um, if they put thirty thousand naira down on me, oh, the, the girl was asking the guy, which one will you pick? Ah, the guy said, ah, of course I'll pick you now. 
And I say, what if they put three million down? Will you pick me or you pick her? <laughs> the guy said was laughing when he was asking the question. The guy said, that's why you're laughing. Because you know that, you know what I should do. <laughs> I would have suggested that just collect the three million. But of course, what the guy was saying in the sense that you collect the three million and what? And leave the girl. So, Amen. Because he believes that if he has money, he will get another girl, most likely. So, that's the point. So, now he said that you should dress it and you should keep it. When it comes to purpose, why is purpose important? Many people can even live on earth and be billionaires or whatever. And eventually you discover that you don't even have anything. You don't have any reward in heaven. God is not pleased with your life. Because what will please God with your life is that he has given you Eden to keep. And I'll give you an example of what your own Eden could look like. Yes. Amen. So that my message will not be too abstract and somebody will now go and say, what did God give me make I they keep now? Some of you, in the family you came from, God started with you first, after you got born again. Because the first initial part, before dressing his first, you rebel. Because God needed to make Adam first, before he started giving him work. If you are not born again, God only not give you work. There's nothing you want to do. So now, some of you, in your family, you are the... Maybe you are not just only the born again, but you are the priest of your family. And you know it. So that is your Eden. That is the first garden in Eden that God gave you. So now you might be surprised that there are other gardens in, even in Eden that is in the western part. That is in north. And what? That is in south. But God chose to give Adam the one in the east. So if God has given your family as a place where you need to dress and keep, as long as you don't do it judiciously, God might not increase your, your scope. You hear these men of God, they will say, and when they started praying and all that, they bro broke family pattern. Maybe a strong man in their family died, you know. They started from that level, right? Before you now hear that, okay, they now have a small fellowship where they are discussing Bible till they got to where they are now. So the way God works is, he wants to trust you. He wants you to be faithful in the little that he has committed into your hands. That's why when I give example about, oh, God is blessing you and God wants to use, you to use your life to bless other people that are less privileged. It's now that you start. If you are not a giver now, if God bless you, no go still be giver. So you must start being faithful with the little one. God is counting on you, brother and sister, and he's saying to you and say, this thing I have given you, what? Dress it and what? And keep it. So, how has your children, or oh, oh, sorry, you're not married yet. How has your brothers and sisters, or how has your siblings benefited from your born again, since you, have, you got born again? Maybe I should interview us. Oh yeah, let's pass the microphone. No, I will interview you. Because some of you, your siblings know the year. All of you, your siblings know the year. I, I, we should put the call through and call them. Let's connect them li live. C connect them on the call. <laughs> okay. Let's start with Stadami, so that she will open the floor for others. How do you think your, just be sincere, how do you think your siblings has benefited from your pony again? It's fine. Maybe you could just. Hallelujah. Or you don't want them to hear online. Yes, I know. But tell us because they're not here, so we can't ask them. Okay. How have you benefited from your siblings' um, born again? Maybe we should start from there. They are cuckoo hearing you online now. Stack Palumi, I know you can hear now. Your sister is roasting you here. And please, when you come back, deal with her very well. If you can hear me, Stack Palumi, drop it in the comment section. Amen. All right. So, how have I benefited? Yes. From your siblings, since they got born again. Or you should just feel like. If I say it's a specific benefit of <laughs> okay. how, how do I think, think okay. that they've benefited? I feel like at least to an extent, um, my consciousness has helped their consciousness. Like them to be more conscious of God, conscious of knowing God, of understanding their reality in Christ, like who God has called them to be, that there is more to life than just... Um, just whatever we thought it was before. Okay, okay, all right. Let me ask another question now, General. If you know you got born again first in your family, let me see. Apart from your daddy and mommy. 
like out of the children. You know, you get born again first. You know, no. See this guy. Oh, you are the first. What are you feeling? Oh, you are the first. See this guy. <laughs> are you the first? Okay. I, oh, yeah, of course, you are not the first. <laughs> Sister, boy, man, are you the first? Out of all the children, you are not the first. Who are the only one person is the first? Okay, two people. Okay, let's interview the two people. Tell us, how have they benefited from you being a Christian? Mm-hmm. Yes, how have they? Do you think they are ben- First of all, do you even think they are benefiting from your born again? Yes, sir. Wow. What is it, please? Okay. Uh, I think um, my brother has benefited, but I think he's. Is the, is the best person to to answer the question? Answer the question. But but the truth well, is that that's what we are saying. Eh? The problem with us is that now you see that oh I don't want to be proud. If they have benefited, you know. Now if I will talk now, I can tell you how my siblings have benefited. Okay, so that which you have, you have given. So talk. Okay. Um, I can say um, true is that. Okay. Yes, and. Um, Okay, encouraging them in the Lord. Yes. Them in okay, the okay, all right. Yeah. Brother Anne, don't drop them. You still hold it, but we are talk. Praise the Lord. Since you are the first born again, now throw it down. <laughs> all right. Okay, I think um, for my siblings and I think for my family too, even though I don't know if I'm the first in the family, but I know I'm the first amongst my siblings. There's a spiritual covering. Okay. For my siblings. Like you put canopy on your head, or anyone you see on canopy or event center. <laughs> <laughs> and I also feel like there's this place of okay. They know that I'm there, even though maybe they are not ready to move to God yet. But they know that okay, I shall. So there is this kind of backing they have, like anyhow, anyhow, I did. All so, right. So uh, serving as a spiritual consultant, Abby, for them. Yes, yes, sir. Amen. All right. So I want to ask Sister Ife now. Give her the microphone. Sister Ife, how, since you are not the first born again, okay, I should not mention your name. Hey, I want to call you. Okay. Sister on white. So, can you speak? How do you think you have, you have benefited from, since you are not the first born again, do you think you benefited from maybe your parents or your the first person that got born again, or your elder sibling, or junior, whoever, have you benefited from their born again? Oh, sorry. First of all, I'm not even sure who is the first. You are not sure who is the first, okay? Yeah. But you are sure you are not the first. I'm not sure. Okay, but yeah, just tell us how you have benefited, irrespective. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, so actually, the thing is this. Yes, I'm the first to give my life to Christ. Okay, you're the first. Now you have talked about But I was never ground. Like I never had a relationship with God. Okay, more like you're not, you are exactly. dashing in, dashing out. And Today I give my life to Christ. I you took it back. I took my life to Christ again. And okay. then after a week, I come back again. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. More like you're not, you didn't have a smooth relationship with God, basically. Yes. Okay, so, but do you think your siblings that are born again, do you think they have any way encouraged you or or yes. maybe not only by words, but have you ever looked at them and you feel like, ah, you understand? So yeah. what? Uh, tell us your experience. Yeah, so my immediate younger brother okay. gave his life to Christ, like, just a few months, a few years after. Okay. And then, um, maybe because he's a quiet one, I can't say, but growing up, since he gave his life to Christ, he had this understanding of who he was. And then he had I can't really say it was that smooth. It wasn't perfect, yeah. But then he had a relationship with God. Like, it was at least better than mine. It was someone who would read his Bible. He would pray. Yeah. So how do you feel when you see him? Like, exactly. So sometimes, did you feel challenged? That, yes, I can do this. I can achieve it. Or maybe was he praying for you? What were you enjoying? At first, I was not, I was not challenged. I got jealous, <laughs> actually. Sure. Yeah. Because I'm like, guy, yeah, you're making noise. But then eventually I took it up as if you could do it and I could do it too. So. Okay. And then I had to tell him, please, if you wake up, wake me up to pray and stuff like that. Okay. So over time, 
it started strengthening me. Okay. And okay, having a relationship with God and mm -hmm. stuff like that. All right. Thank you very much. Gista Mujola, let her answer. Since you are not the first born again in your family, what do you think your siblings work with God? How has it influenced you or has it affected you? I have like this sense of nothing will happen to me ah. because somebody is praying <laughs> for me. <laughs> <laughs> Voila. <laughs> so no. is it? Who tell you say okay? Maybe I'm not the one. Maybe others are praying, but who told you that I pray for you first? Let's start with. It's your confidence for me. Okay. Like I just have this sense that someone is praying for me. Like maybe I feel like oh something can happen to me if I'm going out, but I know that. So it's like someone is just there covering me. I just have like ah. the <laughs> pastor. <laughs> you get back up. You know, say sometimes if you they lead some, your back up no go carry up. Have you don't. Your back up, maybe they just they are, they are they are forgotten. Okay, is that all? You're no. okay. And the second thing is like when I see you pray or when I see you preach, like when I got to Ukraine, yeah, I just feel like I can't do this thing. I just want to be like this person. Ah, uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, okay. Before I entertain other people, it's only Brother Peter that have not spoken. And okay, they have. I said ah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bro, I know you're yeah, calm. I'm coming for you. So you are, you are hiding behind the camera so that no will call you. All right. So we're talking about the topic titled Dress It and Keep It. Oh, you're listening. So I don't need to recap for you then. So we're trying to explain that the fact that God gave Adam the garden to keep and to dress. God did not command Adam that he should keep and dress the earth. When God was addressing chapter 1, when he said, be multiply, subdue. It, the pronunciation was for all men. But the one of Eden was specific for him. And God did not say, keep all Eden. Keep the garden that is in Eden. The one that is in Eastward. Because it was Eastward, right? Good. So that was the instruction. So we must understand a place that God has placed us. Where God has put us. And that's why when it comes to purpose, purpose is location based too. It's not everywhere that you fulfill purpose. And don't let anybody lie to you. That's why Jesus Christ did not leave Israel. He didn't say, let me leave Israel. After all, if I go to another place and preach, and, and they receive the Christ, they can still come back to Israel and preach to them, right? There must be jurisdiction. Don't let anybody deceive you and be like, God called you to ministry. If God called you to ministry, there's location. It must be location specific. That's why every church have where they started from. You see a church that maybe is big, and the headquarter can be in one village. Have you seen church like that before? Maybe the other quarter can be in a mention, can be in like Ayetoro, one in a, in, a, in a place like that. And there are big, big churches in Lagos, Abuja, and all. And the general university still remain in Ayetoro. Though these days, I assume that general can leave and go to Lagos at some point and put somebody in the quarter. But irrespective, to let you know that there was a jurisdiction. I think I heard about, um, 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 little about um, the story of Pastor Elo. That's Pastor Samson in law now, not Paul in law. That when God gave him instruction, the church was meant to be in rural areas, right? So if I'm, uh -huh. should be in rural areas. Though the general plan was that it would be international eventually, which it has become. But many years before the international part came, it was the rural area specific. So many of you will not know that that's the jurisdiction. And you'll be fighting in Lagos. That's why we have many churches in many streets. It, yeah, because some people, God did not even instruct them to start in Lagos, but they felt like they, it will move faster in Lagos. That's why I see people, some people now they are somewhere, and after God has increased them, when Selma was in Zaria, people were traveling to Zaria. But some people would say, ah, but more, if we get church for Lagos, ah, you know, my poor. Up to today, they don't have branch in Lagos. Or they, do, they were not even provoked to make branch. Because the goal is not. You are not, no matter how any church would try with publicity, it cannot reach out to the end of the earth. One church cannot. So everybody must know their jurisdiction. And as long as you are doing your own, you are fine. And when you understand this, you will be satisfied. That even if your members are 10, you are still satisfied. The goal is not to remain on 10 level, don't get me wrong. But the goal is that you, are, you know that God is using, because somebody who is a, uh, a, a builder and will build other people into destiny for them to go affect their world, they might not be too much. But the goal is that 
that he's building them well because now if I build that fair well now, so I fair now my have audience of fifty thousand, and that's what God is preparing her for. So as I've tri- as I've helped her to grow now as a pastor, what happened? I might not see her. We'll just be contacting on phone and maybe once in a while. But she has gone and influenced our world. But for me now, what is that? That's a multiple effect. Somebody must have converted Pastor Adeboe. But do you know how much? That person that converted that Pastor Adeboe doesn't have to have Pastor Adeboe's ministry. That's his jurisdiction. In fact, I think it was when uh, Deeper Life was doing their 40 years, or recently did how many years? Is it 40 or 50 or something? They brought the person that uh, is, that is uh, Pastor Kumi's uh, convert or that converted him, whatever. The man is, I don't even think the man is a pastor. The man is, he's, I think he's not a member, but the man is not a pastor like he, anybody. But what has happened? He has done his part for somebody else. So because in, in, when it comes to blood clotting, the process of blood clotting is a cascade. One activate the other. Your goal is to do your own activation. Don't be saying, hey, if I go and do my activation now, what is that? If I did not reach out to the 50,000, what's my business? We are always paying attention to the end of the earth rather than starting from Eden. I remember sometimes ago I was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And I told them, that's why God started. He said, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. Because if there's no witness in Jerusalem. There can't be in Judea. There can't be in Samaria. It cannot reach the outermost part of the earth. So, but many people want the outermost part of the earth. You have a church in this Abel that we don't know you. But you have branch in UK. What are you looking for? You must at least make your presence known first. You must be witness here. Many people, that's what I'm saying. That's why some people online, you must have read comment like, why is every church moving abroad? Why we need to go through so much here? Yes, instruction is there. I understand there's a place of instruction. But in some cases too, it's, it's somehow. Because if, if, and now you're not carrying all the people that are, all your strength, carrying them there. What it means here? And the church here is not even, it's even growing. It's just like a church that is growing, trying to open another branch. Why? We must start from somewhere. So when God has given you an assignment, your assignment can be that this uh, bro Peter just be interceding for all the men of God in Abel Okuta. That's your what? That's your garden. What? Dress it and what? Keep it. So the day you hear that a man of God fornicated and they caught him and uh, 